Our guest on this episode of the podcast is based out of North Kingstown, Rhode Island. He's an avid fisherman, a great friend of ours, and he's been a tool and die maker for over 25 years. For the past 15 years, he has put his machining skills to use repairing fishing reels for all types of fishermen throughout New England. In this rigging station episode, our guest guides us through properly maintaining and repairing offshore and inshore reels before, during, and after the fishing season. He even has some awesome maintenance tips for reels right out of the box. Our guest shares his opinions on what reel manufacturers seem to be built the best and are easiest to service down the road. This was an awesome conversation. Taylor and I learned a lot. Uh, We've obviously had the pleasure and and been fortunate enough to use a lot of different great fishing equipment, including our own. And we learned a ton from our guests today um, about how to keep our stuff in tip top shape, things that we didn't know before. And we hope that you guys get the same out of it that we did. So without further ado, please welcome to the podcast, David Morton from Beaver Tail Rod and Reel. Welcome to the Sea Bros Fishing Podcast, where we follow three words of wisdom. You can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight. Coming off or what? Get that down. Ahoy. Hey, ahoy, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. You guys surviving up there the winter or what? We are. We are guys, attempting to. Yeah. You guys got hammered up there this winter, huh? <laughs> we did. It was a roller coaster of weather, that's for sure. It has been. That's, yeah. It's yeah. Nice, nice out now, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's nice, nice down here, too. So, it's all yeah. good. Look at your yeah. look at you look at all spruced up today, huh? Well, hey, you know, <laughs> gonna make a good try to make a good impression, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I won't show I won't show you the rest of the shop. Looks like a bomb went off, but uh, <laughs> oh, man. same here. This is the cleanest room in my house. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you as well. Um, yeah. It's totally up to you, but if you're on your are you on your phone or on your laptop? I'm on my phone. If you turn it horizontal, you'll okay. you'll be able to see us better, probably. If you can see us, fine. If not, yeah, I mean, I can I can see you guys. Can you see me? Already? Yeah, we can. You're perfect. All right. Cool. You're perfect. All right. Cool. Um, All right. So yeah, so we appreciate you doing this with us. We really want to just kind of first off say yeah. hello, but then also kind of talk about properly maintaining reels throughout the season and uh, and after the season. First of first and foremost, we're no experts. I mean, we we use them, but we aren't necessarily the best at uh, preventative no. maintenance and all that sort of stuff ourselves. No. So this will be a learning learning yeah. experience well, the, for Taylor and I too. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the key, for sure. The key, the key is you use them, so that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. We like to break things. <laughs> well, that's that's okay too. You know, it yeah. keeps me in business. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, I'm working working on some of your stuff now. Some of your inshore stuff. Um, nice. we're trying to, trying to make a push to get everything to you, um, real soon here so we can, you know, alleviate trips back and forth with gas prices through the roof and, exactly. you know, get you all set up so you guys can get moving. Exactly. It won't be, it won't be long now. So. It won't be, it won't be, we'll be off to the races here in another month. So, so yeah. how, how yep. many, how many reels do you work on roughly in the winter? So every year it's a little bit different. This year has been a kind of a I call it the anomaly because it's just it's incredible the amount of amount of work that's come through. And I have to honestly say a lot of it's because of you guys because I've seen more work from your area this year than I've ever seen. Um, I know um, Brian had posted a little Instagram video of one of the trips we made up there last summer to kind of help you guys out, keep you going with that uh, gear problem we had. Um, and uh, it's amazing how many guys reached out because they saw that video. And uh, it's cool. Yeah, I can't even. I, I I don't even know how many guys I've I've you know got to know up there because uh, you know because it's just they just keep coming. So yeah, <laughs> so it's yeah, all good, the word you know? travels, and you do a great job. So it's gonna be 
honestly yeah. infinite business. It's just how much right. you want to take. <laughs> no, well, that's the thing. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm slowly learning over the years. Like, this has been my, this is my eighth year full time doing this yet. Yeah, it gets a little, get a little skinny in the winter time when, you know, nobody wants to pick up their gear and stuff. And, you know, we, we deal with it, you know, but, um, this year here is just, it just keeps coming. Um, I'm pushing some guys out to like seven to nine weeks right now, which I hate to do. Um, but I, at the same time, I don't want to take gear and have be sitting on it and them anticipating having it next week sometime. And it's not going to happen, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, the other issue is like everybody else, supply chain issues is, is no different here than anywhere else. So, um, it's actually worse here. I mean, Shimano has been a pain to get stuff out of. I, I just got an order from Daiwa that I put in last October. I just got it yesterday. What? Um, oh, actually Saturday I got it. Wow. Yeah. And I got a handle. I have a handle for a spinning reel that a guy contacted me the beginning of last fall. I put the order in and I contacted Daiwa the other day to find out where these other parts were and check on the handle. And I won't see the handle until the end of next month. So, wow. um, the guy is less than happy, but it's not, you know, it's not, he's not, ticked off at me but you know it's a brand new reel you would think they would have handles in stock and yeah. ready to go but they don't so uh, that's a big hurdle that we're trying to overcome it's the only so much i can do on that part so that seven to nine weeks could squeak out even further depending on parts you know and i, I try to explain that to, to everybody and you know 90 percent of the people are pretty receptive to that they know what's going on so where we are now is you know if you don't want to wait the seven to nine weeks, if you have something that you can fish, fish it, fish through and uh, bring some, whatever, if you have something that has a known issue, bring it in or send it in and at least let's get the, the ball rolling as far as pots go. And um, maybe once they're ready to use that gear, then we can flip flop gear and, um, you know, do it that way rather than just having stuff sit here on the shelf. It makes no sense. Right. Yeah. Um, huh. we're, we're limited. We have limited space too. So that's the other part of it. So, you know, and it just gets too confusing. I mean, at one point, I had 75 reels pulled apart, just waiting on parts. And, you know, I don't sleep at night when I have 75 reels that I don't own in my basement. <laughs> in my shop. I, think, I don't think a lot of people realize that, too. You know, they, they send you a no, box of stuff thing. or, you know, yeah. give us a box yeah. of stuff to bring you. And it's like he needs mm -hmm. the space to open it up, diagnose the issue, and then right. you're not putting it back together until you have the part. No, and that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's you're right. I mean, you, you take it apart, you tear it down. It's no need putting it back together because you have to tear it down again. So, you know, we have little boxes here and there with tags and notes and this and that. And, you know, and then what happens, space is a real premium right now. So, um, you know, my wife's about ready to throw me out in the shed. Right? <laughs> 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 she's in the, she's in her office upstairs working with uh, four offshore rods on the floor next to it because I have no place to put them. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So, but it is what it is. Could be worse problems. Yeah, you know? totally. So, so, so how did you? Um, I know we kind of know the story, but yeah, just a yeah. little bit of background before we dive into um, some tips and tricks for some of the mm -hmm. listeners. But how did you get into uh, rod and reel repair and um, kind of tell us the beginning of that there? Yeah, so basically I was driving uh, typical – I'm a typical Rhode Islander just to put that out there. I mean, we don't travel any more than five minutes without a sleeping bag and a lunch. That's it. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 that's just the way it is. We don't cross over the East Bay. Nobody over there comes over here. And, you know, South County, they don't go past what they call the tower. There's a tower. They don't go anywhere north of that. So um, it's it's a – you know, for a small state, it's it's kind of weird, but it is what it is, you know. Yeah. Um, but – um. Yeah, so I was traveling to the north end of the state, which is, you know, and you you know, in your 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 world it's forty five minutes is like five minutes up the street. Here it's like a day trip, you know. So <laughs> yep. I did that for thirteen years working for a uh, a well known jewelry company, Tiffany and Company out of New York City. I did their uh, tool and die work for them. Um it was uh there was six of us in the tool room. I kinda I kinda led the tool room for a little bit and then uh I decided that the corporate world was not for me. So I had been doing this on the side at nights and weekends for friends and myself and stuff. And I started on a little, a little bench. I always tell the story. A little bench was a two by 12 piece of a two by 12 plank, about four feet long. Um, so I started doing it for friends and, and, and myself and family and stuff. And uh, a good friend of mine who we fish, still fish together, he worked up at, at Tiffany, Tiffany as well. He, he said, why don't you put an ad on Craigslist? And I was like, well, I really don't want to do that. I, you know, I don't want to work two jobs, blah, blah, blah. Well, 
come forward about another five, seven years, things started to go south up at Tiffany up there. They started, more stuff was going overseas, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. And um, I, I wasn't feeling comfortable with the position anymore. So I said, well, maybe he's got a point. So I put an ad on Craigslist. I, the first one I did, and I don't know if this was an omen or what, but it was the uh, the editor of Points East Magazine, which I don't even know if that's around anymore. Um, this guy brought me an old 704. He says, can you refurbish this thing? It was his great grandfather's or grandfather's or whatever. I said, yeah, I'll see what I can do. So I, I did it all up. I sent it back to him. He says, uh, he picked it up. He said, I want to write an article about your business. And I said, wow, I was flattered. It's like, I'm, I'm working in my basement. Who wants to write a story about me? You know? So he wrote a little article. It kind of, it, you know, it got public, publicized and everything else. I still have the original copy here somewhere. Um, and then it just grew from there. I mean, it's it just like one thing led to another, to another, to another. We had a website built, um, which I was kind of hesitant about because I didn't want to get overrun with work. But at the same time, I had to have a way of bringing work in. I mean, I, you know, I don't have a marketing department. I can't, <laughs> I can't send people out and market for me. So I figured the worst, the best word of the best marketing would be word of mouth if I could hook up with some guys that really, Absolutely. you know, you know, treat them right. And you know, that's my been my philosophy. It's like. You know, if you're going to do something, just say you're going to do it. And if you're going to do it, make sure you do it right. And don't, there's no second chances, you know? Um, yeah, it's, everything's mechanical. It happens, you know, everything's, ha everything happens for, you know, something, you know, a gear or something breaks like you had, you guys had up your way and stuff, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's going to happen. So, um, but luckily the way we do things, um, is that, you know, I'm not the shop, as you guys know. I, I won't take the cover off and throw grease on top of grease. That, to me, is you might as well not even do it, you know. And it's not fair to you guys. It's not fair to me because I'm going to see that reel in two weeks again. And um, I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. It, you know, I used to have my reel serviced by another shop. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I started doing my own because I just wasn't happy. Um, I don't fish like you guys fish. You guys are out there every day. And, you know, you guys are hooked into some big, big fish. And the last thing you need is a problem, you know. Um, and like I said, it happens, but you try to try to cover all the bases so it doesn't happen. You know, you got, you got paying customers. The last thing they want to see on your boat, you know, you get all the, the boat cleaned up and you know, you're all rigged up, ready to go. And you know, you get crap reels on board. They don't want to see that, you know, yeah. that's not good for your business. It's not good for my business and it's not safe for anybody. So, um, so that's the way I look at it. You know, that's, that's my philosophy. I continue to do that. Um, some guys, I've had some guys squabble, it, you know, it takes a little longer about, well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not the shop for you. Then you have to go somewhere else. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's every reel gets on the bench. It gets broken down to the frame and that's it. I mean, it, it gets built back up and everything gets checked. There isn't a screw. There isn't a spring that we don't look at. Um, if it's in question, I just change it. I mean, there's no need. To, well, I think it's okay. You know, and it's like, and next thing you know, a baron seizes up. Now you're stuck. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's not working for anybody. So. I think one, one thing that sets you apart too, is your communication. I mean, you know, we know yeah. bare essentials to get us by for, you know, a quick mm -hmm. fix or keeping our stuff yep. going throughout the season. But yep. if you're tearing our stuff apart and you're like, you know, this part comes from the manufacturer, it should really be Loctited down or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I like that you call us or transparent about it. So we right. are able to identify that issue if it, you know, yeah. happens to us right. in the middle of the season, right. you know, that not everyone right. does that. And that's, that's super yeah. important. Just that awareness. No, it is. And I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. I mean, you know, just be fair with guys, be open with guys. I mean, let's face it. There's no, there's no secrets to what I do. Um, you can go on YouTube. Anybody can go on YouTube and do it. Um, I've had guys do it and I've said this year here, for some reason, I think guys are trying to, you know, um, they know what the time frame or the lead time is going to be. So they're trying to do it themselves. And just yesterday I took five reels and Ziploc bags. in. so, um, <laughs> <laughs> they lost a little patience. <laughs> yeah. They lost a little patience. One guy said, my wife couldn't do it anymore. She just put it in the bag. It's like your wife was working on your reel. It's like, Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> now, I can only imagine. I mean, they'll get up in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning. They'll step on a spring or something. Well, there's that spring you lost exactly. or, yeah. or whatever, you know, some so, of that stuff is so small. I don't know how you do yeah. it. Yeah, and you know some of the stuff is is really small. I mean, I you know it's 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 amazing the bait casters that are out there. I mean, I've seen so many freshwater bait casters used in salt water, and they just gum up with salt, and they're just really not made for that environment. That's all there is to it, you know. And um, but guys love them because they fit in the palm of their hand. They they give them the ratio they want, gear ratio, drag is is fine. Um, but I mean, they just don't hold up, like, yeah. <laughs> you know. And there's so many little pots, it's crazy. 
Um, a lot of the pots these days, I mean, you know, you got your brass in with plastic parts. So, you know, plastic is made to, to is, as a sacrificial uh, element of the reel. So if something metal jams up, the plastic strips out and you're replacing the plastic rather than the metal. So, um, but with that said, I mean, you see more and more plastic in today's reels, which is not good because the salt just, you know, it, it gets in there, binds them up. And, um, you know, all the tolerances end up getting loose and next thing you know, you get a piece of junk in two years. So, yeah, you know, it, that's, that's the tough part, but it is what it is. You got to deal with it and move on, you know? So, Jared, uh, do you have a question? Yeah, kind of. Maybe it'll bring us through a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, most of our listeners, I'm going to say are, are offshore, uh, mm-hmm. type listeners. Um, yep. if guys were to, to say by, you know, uh, four or five brand new one thirties and, and, uh, it doesn't matter the brand. Is there mm-hmm. certain things that you recommend when it comes to offshore reels, uh, just right off the bat that you should do just for brand new reels to kind of be preventative? Right. So my big thing, and, and guys will laugh at me when I tell them this, they, 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 I've had a couple guys tell me, well, you're just saying this because you don't a, a real service business. And it's really not that. It, and basically what it comes down to, it's like, I, I use this analogy all the time. It's like, take your brand new truck and drain all the oil and fluids out of it and go drive down to Florida and back again, doing about 80 miles an hour, pulling a trailer or a boat or whatever. And, you know, let me know how you make out when you come back, because that's basically what, you, what you're going to have is you're going to have a bunch of ground up metal. That's what you're going to have, you know. Wow. Um, and that's what happens nowadays is when these, these reels are built, my, my way of looking at it is there's two ways of looking at it. The first way is that they don't lubricate them at all at the factory. I mean, 90% of the reels that I see brand new out of the box um, I just have nothing in them. They're bone dry. So it's back to the analogy of your truck. I mean, you start going out there and you get into a big fish and that thing runs. The next thing you know, you know, you're trying to reel it in and the, the gears are skipping and, you know, things aren't sliding like they should. Two speed buttons aren't working and uh, your clickers aren't working. And it's just all kinds of stuff that can go wrong. Um, so what I do, I tell guys, and I mean, not everybody has to wants to do this and I get it. And I honestly, I promote guys to, to, to try it. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing you're going to do that's going to hurt the reel that we can't fix or put back together. Okay. Um, on the offshore stuff, what I tell guys is if you're, if you're worried about things flying out on you, uh, pieces missing, always take the opposite cover off from the handle. So don't take the handle side off, take the other cover off. What that does is that allows you to pull the spool assembly out and now you can access everything on the inside of that cover for the handle side okay your gearing is in there uh your clicker buttons in there and pretty much everything you need to know your your your, your um uh, your cam for your your drag your lever drag is in there so you can get some grease in there and i mean again some grease is better than no grease let's face it um so if you can if you get a brand new reel you're not comfortable it doesn't feel right it's a little sticky maybe or it's a little rough um, you know, by all means, take the cover off on the opposite, the handle side. Cause like I said, there's nothing in there other than maybe a barren. That's about it. Um, and then your whole spool assembly comes out and your spool assembly actually houses your drag assembly, which is on the, on the handle side usually, or it could be on, it, it, it depends on the model. It could be on one, one side or the other, but you'll see everything inside your reel and you can basically get something in there. And again, anybody can do it. I mean, you can do it the night before your trip if you wanted to. I wouldn't advise it, but just in case something goes south. But, um, you know, for the most part, that's that's basically what I see. Um, it's no different with the inshore stuff. Um, spinning reels, you, know, you look at the spinning reels compared to offshore stuff. I mean, offshore stuff, yes, it takes a beat and when the fish, but, you know, you're spinning gear, you're, you're probably making a 1,000 casts every trip, okay? So that there is high speed. The gears are high speed. They're, they're, they're much finer material. Uh, they're trying to make them lighter with the offshore gear. I mean, you're, you're fighting it from a, a fighting butt and the, the gunnel of the boat. You're not really worried about weight. You really want weight at that point. Mm. Um, if you're fishing from a belt, that's a different story. But, you know, usually you have the harness and all that other stuff on. For a spinning reel, or even a conventional reel, I mean, there's there's none of that. So you're, you're fishing it just like, you know, you're making a thousand casts or you're dropping down, who the heck knows, 2,000 times a trip. You know, you know whether you're dropping 8 ounces or 10 ounces or 12 um, you know, that all wears on the reel, uh, eventually. Um, so that's super important to get that stuff, get some grease in there. Um, you'll see a lot of, I see a lot of reels, you know, brand new out of the box with nothing in them. 
And I always joke because it's like it either it was either built on a, a finished up on a Monday or a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Monday the guy was probably hung over, and Friday the guy just wanted to get the hell out of the shop and go fishing, so he just threw it together and <laughs> put it in a box. So, yeah. That's so the way you, I look. So you're at seeing it, brand you know? new twelve hundred dollar reels with that are basically dry. Yeah, bone dry. Bone. The other that's the other analogy. Yeah. The other the other issue, and I don't know if it's a real issue. I, well, I know it's an issue, but I don't know if it's really happening like this, but. We all see the container ships sitting out there in the ocean just bobbing around, all right? Those things are in those big metal boxes, okay? Well, your reels are in cardboard boxes inside those metal boxes. Well, those metal boxes heat up and they cool down, heat up and cool down. So condensation builds up in these reels. Um, I had a guy bring a brand new box and, you know, my thing, you know, I, I, I always, my, my thing has always been attention to detail that's that's how i look at everything in my life a tool and die maker everything was like tenths of an inch everything i dealt with so and it it's flooded over into this and that's what's making it work for me because nobody really looks at stuff like i look at stuff so this guy brings a brand new pen slammer three in and the first thing i look at is the box and the box box has water damage on it and i'm saying okay so maybe he maybe it, it was fell in the snow outside of his house so maybe whatever something happened so I called him up. I said, listen, I said, uh, and I, I was I was finding stuff in this reel that I have never seen in my life, you know, like like almost like condensation. But it was like, you know how dried up salt gets? It gets yeah. all that white color. That's yeah. what it looked like inside. It's a brand new reel. He's never fished it. So I, I called him up. I said, listen, I got to ask you a question. I said, I noticed the box is a little wet and the, your reel's got some some abnormal stuff going on for a brand new reel. He said, to be honest with you, he said, I thought it was kind of odd when he bought the reel that the box was wet. But he said, I just thought it was from the shop or whatever. Um, he did a little bit of homework on it. Come to find out, that was one of the reels that was in that, one of the containers out, out in the, the ocean. They're bobbing around for a while. So I don't know if it's rainwater that got in there or what huh. the, the condensation. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But you know, e we even got that. snow. I mean, I'm sure snow is an issue sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Snow could be any kind of moisture yeah. gets in there. You know, it's it's again, it's like, you know, taking all the fluids out of your car and go running in a pond. I mean, something's going to go in there and you're going to have a problem. So it's it's pretty much the same same scenario. Wow. You know, so, yeah, I mean, a pre-lubing is a good thing, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's not a lot of guys that want to do it because they think it's a waste of money. But, I mean, in, the, in my eyes, I mean, either now you pay now or you're going to pay later because, I mean, you're going to end up either throwing the reel away or you're going to have problems out there on the first day of your season, you're going to, you're going to have issues, you know, um, you'll be I've replacing hand, brand new parts immediately. Right. Exactly. Yep. Mm. I've seen, uh, I've seen handles. I had a guy, uh, he had a, uh, Shimano Tiagra 130, brand new out of the box last year. He went out and fished. We had a close in tuna bite here at Point Judith and, um, everybody was a tuna fisherman that last year. So, uh, guys would go out in 20 foot boats. I didn't know what they were doing. They just go buy stuff online and just, just, throw it on a rod and go fish um the guy had a fish on and, and the handle busted off the screw the the, the handle nut for the holes on the handle just broke it just broke and now he's stuck now the fish is just ripping line out he has no idea what the hell to do uh he, he finally got enough brains he cut the line but i don't know how many yards of line. <laughs> you know, yeah. it. it's like yeah you better just stick with inshore stripers i think you'll be fine with that yeah, so, yeah. um it was a mess but that's funny you know, that's, that's funny. what you deal as with. far as uh <laughs> Like the average person that's buying these offshore reels, say they want to do preventative uh, lubrication on them or mm -hmm. you know, yep. greasing or whatever. Um, what products can these guys find that are e that's easily accessible? Maybe not for like a professional like you. You may buy something in bulk or whatever, but mm -hmm. what's yep. what's some products that guys can buy that they can use inside and outside their reels for uh, okay. yeah. when they're brand new? I've, I've tried a lot of different greases, as you can imagine. Um, honestly, the best grease that I found, bang for the buck, is you can go to your local uh, Ace or uh, Marine store, Ace Hardware. I don't know if it's uh, over here. We have Ace with the Marine store inside of it. Um, they uh, Quicksilver Marine Grease. It's the same stuff basically you're using your trailer axles, okay? It uh, comes in a tube. Um, I don't have a tube here close, but... Um, it comes in a tube, and you basically just you know you can use that. It's like a it's like a off white color. It's almost like a a beige color, I guess you could call it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that pretty much gets used on every reel that I service. Um, I was trying the the pen blue grease. That's okay, but it turns to oil real quick. And as far as I'm concerned, if it's going to turn to oil, 
you know, all those lubrication properties are pretty much gone, you know, and, and on top of that, you're going to be covered in oil in the boat. You know, it's, it's just going to come out of the reel. It's simple as that. Huh. This, this Quicksilver Marine Grease sticks the gears really well. Um, it, it's, it's amazing how well it does stick. Um, you don't need a lot of it. Like inshore gear, I don't suggest a lot of it. Offshore gear, you know, I, I don't want to say the more the better, but the more the better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It lubricates stuff. Um, you know, as far as where to use the greases, okay, and then we'll get into, I'll tell you what kind of oils I use. Um, the greases, any kind of gear, or any kind of moving part that isn't a shaft, okay, or doesn't go into a sleeve or a barren, um, I recommend putting the, the, uh, the grease on gears. Uh, two speed buttons. Um, you know, a lot of your reels have the detent buttons. I push them down and put some grease on that so it seals it up so they don't get stuck down. Uh, that's a big problem. Um, you know, and that's that's pretty much what I use the grease for. I mean, even you could take a little bit of this grease and actually put it on the reel foot before you clamp it on down onto your, your rod butt just to kind of kind of put a barrier in there so that the, uh, you don't have the disseminal metals. That's a big issue. Yeah. Uh, you guys see it on the boats all the time with the stainless and aluminum. It's always an issue. Um, and it's, it's no different with the reels, you know. So a little bit of barrier coat on that is perfect. Uh, the threads of your rod clamps, just a little bit. And, you know, don't put a lot on there. You don't want to be covered in this stuff when you're fishing. You just wipe it on there and, and screw it down and be done. Um, yeah, on the, on the ferrules and stuff, all you really need is a film, just a film barrier between film. the ferrule, the butt, and the actual... Exactly. And do, yep, and do the same thing on the on the reels with the uh, the mount up to the butts. Just a just a light coating. That's all you need. Um, and it's just enough, just enough to to stop it. Is it going to save it? Is it going to you know last long term? Probably not. You're going to have to do it a couple times, but um, at least this you got a barrier coat there. Um, as far as oils, um, there's all kinds of oils you can use. I know a lot of guys use all kinds of oils. I'm friends with guys on this new Facebook group. They're just using whatever they can find at their hardware store. Um, I use a product called Relex. Um, I swear by it. I've used it on my own stuff. I've used it since, I think it's since it came out. And every reel that gets that's, gets serviced here, I use Relex on. Um, Relex is a light oil, but it's also almost like a penetrating oil. So if you have something that's stuck, you can put a little drop on that and let it sit for a little bit, and it'll 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 take anything off. It's crazy. Um, so pick yourself up some of that. Um, it comes in an aerosol can or it comes in a, a squirt bottle. Um, I use a – I think it's a – I think it's a four-ounce bottle. Yeah, four-ounce bottle will probably last me a year and a half of service because wow. you don't need a lot of it. It just, it just, it's amazing how it just seeps into the, the finest crevices, you know, like a, a, like a barren has a shield on it. Most of them, everybody says, well, you can't, you can't put that in a barren. Well, you can, because you can, it'll seep its way underneath the shield and lubricate the barren. Um, so, you know, if you get a noisy barren, it's a good option to try that rather than, you know, try to, you know, if you're in a jam, you, you want to use the reel and, you know, you know, get some oil in there. It will, it'll probably free it up. You know, enough to use it. And eventually, you're going to have to replace the barren, but at least you keep it going. Mm. Um, not a bad idea to have on the boat, even. Uh, you know, if, if you run into a sticky handle. Um, yeah, I mean, on the on the offshore reels, on the the this is just specifically with the pens, the older pens, um, not the newer pens. Uh, the older pens with the big gold knob on it has two hollows on either end of it. Okay. If you look down on, on both sides, there's a big screw down there. It's a regular screw, a uh, regular fill, uh, slot head, slotted head screw. If you can get the screwdriver down in there and, and put some pressure on that and unscrew those screws on both sides, you can slide that whole handle assembly off the main shaft of the handle. Okay. And what that does, that allows you to get the salt and the crud that's in there out. Then put the real X on it and put it back together and put those screws back in. Put a little bit of grease on the end of the screws so it, it just rides in the slots there oh, and it doesn't right. gum it up. But, um, you know, there's things you can do to, to get around it. You know, some of the newer reels, um, in fact, I'm looking at one of your reels right now. Um, there's a plate on the handle knob. There's two Phillips head screws. You can take them out and you can access the uh, the top of the, the, um, the shaft for the handle right there. A little bit of grease, uh, oil down in there. Um, you guys shouldn't have a problem because that's one of the things I service. I mean, I, I, that's one thing I'm a stickler about is uh, handle sticking or squeaking. I mean, any kind of squeaking, that's it. Take the rod off, take the reel off the rod and throw it in the water. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so but, uh, uh, make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. That was great. That was so, really good information. Yeah. 
We paused this episode for a quick announcement for one of our good friends um, and fellow charter captains, Jesse Martello. Uh, Jesse's son, Jesse Jr., uh, was recently diagnosed with an aggressive form of leukemia called T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And while the outlook for Jesse is optimistic, the battle is just beginning. Um, the doctor's initial prognosis indicates that Jesse Jr. is in for a fight that could last three years with chemotherapy and many hospital ver- visits during what should be the prime years of his youth. And um, Jesse's an avid fisherman. He mates regularly for his dad um, in their charter business, Think Big Charters, aboard their, aboard their boat, Necessary Expense. They fish from Connecticut um, to the Northeast Canyons. Uh, they tuna fish. They're, they're a part of um, our community, and, and they're great people. Um, Jesse Jr. also enjoys playing soccer, basketball, lacrosse. He races go-karts. Um, he skis. He snowmobiles. It's, it's really sad that he has to deal with this um, at this point in his life. But we're here to support Jesse, and we're hoping that um, you all can take a moment and, and help support him as well. Uh, right now, Jesse's family faces uncertainty with medical costs and other financial burdens associated with treating this disease. And to help ease the burden, there's been a website that's been set up to help facilitate fundraising efforts and help aid Jesse Jr.'s family and the entire Martello family with expenses that they're going to face during this battle. So if you take a moment and visit thinkbigjesse.com, that's thinkbigjesse.com, um, starting on February 15th, there's going to be a series of raffles and auctions for some some really great um, items and some charters, um, pen and real easy custom rods. They're donating reels, rods, There's many other sponsors and supporters on there, um, many of which have sponsored and supported the podcast as well. And um, we just hope you take a moment to, to go on the website and support and support a great cause for a great kid. So again, visit thinkbigjesse.com and... Uh, and feel free to donate and participate in any of the, the raffles and the, um, the silent auctions. Um, how, I mean, I know you don't get into it, but, uh, have you played around with trying to lubricate guys guides on offshore rods before? Yeah. So that's one thing that I'm seeing a lot more of. Cause a lot of guys, I think, especially down here with the tuna bite being close in, they're just buying stuff, whatever they can find, because they want to get into the action this year. Um, I've seen an awful lot of roller guides, uh, AFCO roller guides. I mean, they're good guides and everything. But on the older rods, let's face it, they gum up. It's only a bushing. Um, Some cases, it's a plastic bushing. Sometimes it's a bronze bushing. Um, You know, so the biggest thing is, you know, do yourself a favor, back those screws off um, and and take those, drop those rollers out one, one at a time. Um, use a little bit of WD-40 on a Q-tip and get in there and clean those bushings out. Um, you know, a little uh, toothbrush or a little brass wire brush of some sort uh, to brush inside the frame so it kind of it, it kind of gets rid of that crud buildup. Um, you know, it's what I'm finding it's 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 a combination of both, if not just one, of if the rollers don't turn, it's either the rollers are gummed up or the frame inside the frame where the roller rides is is got all kinds of corrosion in there. Um, you just want it to move free. I mean, they're not, they're not, they're not going to spin like a Baron would spin, but you know, when you get line pressure on that, you want to make sure that they're okay because you know, in the, in the fight that all it takes is that line to skip over the, one of the rollers and then get jammed between the guide and the guide frame and the roller and you're done. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, so you think um, do that once a year, just clean those out. Yeah. I would say once a year in the, yeah. in the spring, if, I mean, if, if you find one, that's an issue, then I would just replace it. I mean, look at the bushings really close. If there's any kind of galling or any kind of like chips or anything like that, that's that's kind of to the extreme. I don't think you'd ever see that. But Winthrop makes good stuff. They really yeah. they really do. So, but they're no you know they're no different than any of the other ones too. You got to keep them clean. Right. Um, you know the the most important guide really is the, is the tip top. You want to make sure that roller stays clean. Um, you know, you want to make sure whatever you put, whenever you put that in, that the space between the guide frame and the roller body or the roller bases 
is as tight as possible so that line has no chance of skipping over. Yeah. Um, you know, you get a little bit of slack in that line, it just it just it'll skip over and then you'll have a problem. Yeah. Um so yeah, that's that's a that's a big thing and you know, it's a, that was a good point to bring up. Winthrop um, actually has a little recessed pocket in the frame so it can't jump. Yeah, there's no way for it right. to yeah. jump. Yeah. Which is yep. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Does a yeah, nice that's, job that's, of designing that. Yeah, no, that's that's really nice. That's what that's what they all should do, but you know, I get it. It's it's uh the price of the guide, you know. Yeah. But but, um, what, um, what about products for, I know a method, but I don't know if you have any products in mind for preventing pitting on the, on the spool. So, you know, got a lot of guys don't change line on reels or, mm-hmm. or whatever else. Is there any sort of like protectant to, that you use for that part of the reel? Yeah. So, um, on, on a lot of the older, you know, just jumping back into the inshore category a little bit, or, you know, the, the lighter you know, offshore, I guess, um, you know, Shimano, uh, Penn had the, uh, the, um, Oh God, what the hell was it? I forgot the name of it now. Well, they had a reel that had aluminum spool. Okay. And the aluminum, with the, the aluminum, forget it. I mean, the, the offshore reels aren't bad. They're aluminum with anodized coating, but there's a lot of, a lot of older spools out there that are just plain aluminum. They had like a coating on them. What happens over time is that, that salt water works its way down and through that Dacron and it just keeps going. And, you know, like I said, if you don't change the, the line, I'll just spin it off even and clean it and check the spools. Um, you don't know what's going on underneath. You just don't. Um, and there's no way of finding that out until it's number one, the spool breaks in half, which I've seen. Um, <laughs> or, yeah. Can you imagine, dude? Yeah. No. Uh, I've seen yeah. a lot of things break while fighting a fish, but that I have not That's, seen. And I hope no. I never see that. Ever. It was unbelievable. The guy, the, just a short story. I won't divert too far, but. Uh, the guy told me, he says, I know the spool's rubbing on the frame. And I'm telling well, bring the reel in. Maybe there's something there's something obviously wrong. So I, I'm working on it. I'm I'm turning the handle before I service it, just like I always do. And I'm looking, and it's like the spool's like turning like an egg. It's like, and the other side's round. It's just, it's not, it's like, what the hell's going on? So I, first thing I went after was the line. I spun the line off. I don't I don't have a machine big enough to take all the line off. So I was taking it off in pieces and uh, or sections. And uh, I got down and the spool just fell out of the frame. It's like... <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> I, seeing, wow. I wish I had the spools still. I gave it back to him because I found out later his buddies wanted to bust his butt, and I think it's on the boat somewhere that That's you know awesome. just to check it out. But anyways, <laughs> so this guy, so basically on these uh, these pen reels, what was happening is that the guys would um, guys would put the dacron on and all the spools. The spools are really thin aluminum. The salt would migrate down in and attack the spools, and then the spools would get pitted. I mean, they get to the point where they're just like holes right through the side walls of the spools. It was just crazy. So what I did is I ended. Up, I, I was talking to a friend of mine. And he said, "Why don't you put some kind of coating on that?" And I said, "Well, that's a good idea." So what I did is just, we do some rod work here, some some inshore rod work. We'll replace guides and tip tops and stuff. So I have a whole setup to to do rods. So what I did is I took some rod building epoxy and I made a little fixture to hold the spool in the in the uh, the uh, the lathe the dryer motor and i would coat the inside of the spool with a little bit of rod building epoxy right up to the the rims of the spools and basically what that does is just puts a barrier coat on there so the the salt can't get through it um you know that works on the smaller spools i don't know if you'd ever want to coat a big big (laughs) big offshore spool on a 130 or something but yeah um other than that, I mean, there's really not much you can do. I mean, you could rub some, get some like uh, some of the the real uh, the real X or something, and rub it on there. Uh, some guys use fluid film. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that stuff. Um, they'll kind of coat the spool with that and then put the line on top of it. You can't put too much on it because you know it'll start affecting the lines and stuff. And you won't have enough friction but, down the arbor of the spool to hold. Your well, stuff that's the tight. other thing too. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you know you gotta get those arbor knots uh, as tight as you can. I mean, you don't want stuff starting to slip because now now you got all kinds of issues. Yeah. So we just put um, a little WD forty on them, right? Yeah, a little WD, WD on a rag, let yep. it dry, and then we. Every yep. year, you know, back to your point about unspooling reels. I know we've mentioned mm-hmm. this in other podcasts, but it's super right. important to keep your stuff in tip top right. shape is to take that Dacron and hollow braid, solid braid, whatever off yep. each season, yep. clean it, clean the arbor of the spool. It's mm-hmm. amazing it if you just on. wait two years, the difference. Yeah. Brand the new one reels. year and the two years. It's it's a unbelievable yep. how much like uh like you said, attacking of the spool and all the other parts. Mm-hmm that happen if you don't just stay on top of it yep one uh kind of the tie into all this too 
we've always been kind of in the philosophy of not soaping our reels like mm-hmm. crazy because right. we think that it, you know, degreases them and, and gets, you know, gets in there and removes some of the stuff you want to keep in there. Is that true? Are you under that same? Yeah. So, um, a lot of guys will, a lot of guys will soap them. I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, cause let's face it. I mean, there's all kinds of nooks and crannies where that soap's going to get into, um, the grease, this, this Quicksilver Marine grease, um, it holds up well, but there's no need to introduce more, more detergents to it than what's, what what's you will with just normal spraying off, you know? Yeah. Uh, there is products out there. Real, uh, not real X. I mean, real X makes it. Um, it's a, uh, it's a product you can spray on, but I don't. I don't recommend spraying anything on the reel. What I recommend is spraying on a rag and wiping the reel down. Okay, mm-hmm. um, you know when you get back to the dock, you know a, a, a fine mist of spray from the ho- the freshwater hose to kind of rinse the salt built up off, um, and that kind of gets gets the biggest part of it rinsed off. Um, you know I've seen guys just a straight stream into the reel. The only thing you're doing is pushing all that salt back in. Um, and those are the reels that I see that are just, you can't get screws out. I mean, it's just a mess. Um, so I recommend a fine spray, um, and then let them dry. Even if you took WD-40 on a rag and just wiped it down, you don't want to soak them. You don't want, you know, you don't want WD-40 holding a line or any kind of salt, uh, uh, spray or the salt, um, corrosive spray in, in your line. You just want to keep that as clean as possible. That's why I recommend the rag. You know, if you keep a, an old towel on board or something you can just use for that, that's perfect, you know. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with the rods. Wipe the rods down as well. I mean, you'd be surprised. You know, an old timer told me years ago he used to build rods, and guys would bring rods, and he'd, he'd take a towel and <laughs> wipe them down with WD-40. It looked like brand new. Yeah. And I, I tried it, and it actually does look like brand new. It takes all the crap off the rods and makes them look good. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know, get some real, real X on the rollers and stuff like that. You know, little points like that. Um one thing that guys don't do, and I think they should do, and I mean, it, it, it could be a little bit of a pain, is to back the nuts off on the rod butts a little bit. From time to time, put a little bit of Real X, keep that lubed up. Um, I have two 130 setups right now. I can't get the I can't get the reels off the rods. I'm going to have to cut the reels off to get them off the rods to service them and replace the feet. That's the only way I'm going to get them off. Wow. Um, I've tried heat, and, you know, anything other than a pipe wrench. And the guy told me, he says, you know, use a pipe wrench if you have to. It's like, I don't think you want me to use a pipe wrench on the butts, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they just won't come off because that that salt gets in that aluminum and just you know seals up those threads and you, it just just like welds it. That's it, you know. So a little bit of oil in there to kind of work them back and forth, then run them back up on the foot. Um, same thing with the clamps, uh, any of the clamps, the turnbuckles, whether it's a one thirty of the turnbuckles or the uh, the clamp that actually clamps onto the rod. Back that off and. Um, what I've been doing is using a piece of rubber inner tube between the the clamp and the in the the butt itself. That kind of seals it up. Yeah. Kind of stops that electrolysis issue. So some of the some of the new reels or you know rolled reels come with that like those little rubber right. chunks Ooh, like the new pens do. Yep. Basically, like yep. shrink like a it is shrink tube. I think is yeah. They're pretty much Similar. sending or yeah, some it's, form it's pretty of close it. to that. Yeah. yeah, a lot of guys throw it out. They think it's part of the packaging and they just throw it out. Right. And it's like. You know, but eventually, I mean, if you put grease on it, you'll be fine. But yeah. you know, put that in there; it's not going to hurt. It, it'll, it'll, it'll keep it, um, um, keep it in good shape. Um, what's some of the other things, uh, you know, you know, the butts against into the rods, like like Brian said, a little light grease on that. Take those apart from time to time. Make sure they're free. Um, you know, all that stuff helps. I mean, you know, it doesn't take much. Doesn't take much time. I mean, you're waiting for clients to get on the boat. Just you know, do one at a time if, if you have to or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. And um, that way, it, it saves a lot of headaches in the in the later on. Uh, it definitely um, does. I mean, we spend a lot of time each spring. You know, mm-hmm. each each fall winter unspooling and each spring. You know, everything gets greased before it goes back on a rod butt strap wrench right. and everything. And yeah. Yeah. You know, it goes it goes a long way. Once you get up, you know, triple digits fishing in a season, you don't want stuff breaking down. Yeah. And you want to be able right. to pull stuff apart to repair it. No, exactly, exactly. You know, and that, it, you know, another thing to uh, consider, um, and you don't see this on new reels, but the new pens, they have a, a plastic bushing where the stainless screw goes down through the, the aluminum cover, okay? And that stops a lot of the electrolysis buildup, a lot of salt buildup. Smart. But if you... If you have a reel like that that doesn't have the bushings, 
a uh, little bit of that, that quicksilver marine grease on the threads of the screws and then screw it into the side cover. That'll kind of that'll kind of stop that from happening. It'll stop the the assault from attacking the screws in the cover. Um, I got a reel right in front of me, an old 30, and I can't get the screws out of it because they're, they're basically welded in the cover. So now I got to drill all the heads out, which we can do, but it's just more work to get it apart, you know? Yeah. Um, and you can't, you, you know, in my eyes, you can't service a reel unless you can get it all the way apart. I mean, some guys will say, like the guy with that, the reel stuck to the rods, well, just service them on the rods. I, I, you can't service a reel on a rod. You just can't. Oh, you can, but you can't do it thoroughly, yeah. you know? So it has to come off. And it's only going to help him in the future because now he can get the reels off the rods later on, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, what, it's, it's just like anything else. I mean, you know, if you have a Maserati, you're driving it around Boston and all the salt and crap they put it on the road and you just put it in the garage for a year or two and you get back in and the doors don't open up. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same same thing. It's just take care of your stuff. I mean, because you pay enough money for it. It's not like it's you know, a, a hundred dollar investment. I mean, you got, you got a lot of money tied up, you know, and especially if you want to go out and fish and the, the, you know, the bites on, you don't want to be messing around and say, Oh, I wonder if this works, you know? Yeah. Um, you want to make sure it's all in order and ready to go. So, uh, I have two points and I want to say them before I forget about the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, one is, um, can you, and I guess I'll say both and then you can answer each. Uh, the first one is like, can you go through how you, decide whether or not to fix something for somebody so say they have a reel that they buy brand new that's 150 bucks and they want to have it serviced there's something wrong with it and you find something out that's you know that's substantial that's going to potentially cost more or close to the amount of the reel that it would cost for a brand new reel and then the second one is uh walk us through like if, if if we were going to bring you reels, which we already know the answer to this, but our listeners don't. If we're mm -hmm. going to bring you a bunch of reels, how do you like them uh, prepared, I guess? Like, um, you know, do you want okay. clamps left on them? Do you want them on spool? Do you want them mm -hmm. on butts? Do you not want them on butts, et cetera? Okay. Yeah, so to answer the first question, um, I've learned over the years that, you know, and I used to fix everything. I used to fix antique reels. I still do from time to time. I kind of... I kind of pick and choose what I want to do on that end. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, just to your point, Taylor, I mean, you know, you're going to put $150 into a $25 reel. I mean, it's, it's in my mind, that's really not, not worth it. You know, if, but on the other side, if it's a sentimental thing, then that's something that needs to be discussed with the, the, the customer before we move forward with it. So he understands and there's no surprises, you know? Um, and we've had, cases where you know i've i've clearly stated my my issues with the reel to the customer saying hey you know you're gonna have to rebuild the whole reel it's gonna cost you you know 100 bucks to, to fix an old mitchell 300 um and he said no go ahead it's my grandfather's reel i want to keep running and then when we get done we give him the bill for 100 dollars. like well how come how come it's not just like well you know you, you got to understand that you know it takes time to go through this stuff um you know i have a shop rate that i i i try to stick with um I am the, the, the I'm I'm the, probably the, the worst offender of it because I get wrapped up in these charity reels I call them where like I just you know like, I feel bad for the guy so I I stop working on it and next thing you know I'm up to my ears in it and it's like what the hell I got three hours into this this reel that's worth twenty five dollars like what do you do you know um, and of course at that point I have to finish it or I feel like I have to finish it so I finish it you know um, lately uh, because of the workload this year I've I've turned away a lot of that work. Um, I've turned away a lot of shops that, that used to give me that work only because of that. Um, so, you know, the, the shops tend to add on, they have to add a little bit for their, their service and my service. You know, yeah. I, I have a base price and then they add on, um, which is really not fair for the customer. Uh, one of my shops, I just, I just gave them the, the word this morning that we're all set because of that. Uh, customers are calling me com complaining to me, like I charged them too much. Well, it really wasn't me. It was him upcharge of my work like 20 bucks it's wow. like what are, what are you doing it's like how am i gonna make money like this you know yeah so so you know to that point there yeah you have to it's kind of like i i use my own just my own uh discretion on what i want to work on um you know I, I will work on stuff you know you have to catch me on the right day if i'm not if i'm not really loaded up with work maybe i got some time i can squeak in a a, a lower end reel but people have to understand that, you know, you still, you still, at the end of the day, you have to make a living doing it. Otherwise you won't be here. So, right, <laughs> you exactly. Know? So, um, and for the second question, um, 
you know, I have guys bring rods, the, the big reels on, on butts and stuff, which is fine. You can do that. Um, you know, I charge a little extra because it's, 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 it's a reason why they send them with the butts on them because they can't get them off. <laughs> yeah. So it takes me a little longer to get them off in some cases, but you know, and I, I've spent many hours with a torch and, you know, a wrench trying to get stuff apart just to get the reel off the, the butt so I can service it. Um, you know, so I'd rather see the, the reels with, without the butts, but if you can't get the reel off the butt, then by all means, send it in and, uh, you know, we'll go easy on them. You know, it's not going to be that crazy and, uh, we'll make sure we get it off and get everything lubed up. So when they do it again, it's not a problem. Yeah. So, um, but- yeah, so that's, that's pretty much that. Yep. And and you can leave line on or take line off. Yeah, so I leave it up to the the, the uh, discretion of the the guy who owns the reel. I mean, if you if you're gonna ditch the line, I can take it off. Like I said, I don't have a big enough machine, uh, but I can take it off in sections and do stuff like that. Um, it's a, it takes a little more time to do it that way, but you know, it is what it is. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. So most guys want to leave the stuff on. They maybe take the top shot off, which I can do that. Um. You know, I could take the Dacron off. I just have no way of putting it back on. That's my problem. Um, I'm looking into a bigger machine because I'm seeing more offshore stuff, and I got to be more prepared for that. Oh um, man, you're getting into the thick of it. <laughs> just, well, you know, it's, yeah. it's you know, I I just want to be to the point where you know, again, if I can, if I say I'm going to do them, I want to be able to do them and do them right. I don't want to, yeah. you know. Uh, I've always said the money is in the details and details like, you know, like, you know, stuff that people doesn't don't really see. I see. So I got to go after it and I got to I got to just, you know, do what I need to do. Um, you know, and I just I just want people to be happy with the service. You know, I don't I don't want anybody. I'm sure there's going to be rumblings out there somewhere. Somebody's not happy about something, but it is what it is. You know, I mean, uh, you can't please everybody, as you know, but you try to I try to do the best we can. And, um, you know. And that's where we go. Well, you do a good job. We certainly put our trust and faith into you and your attention attention to uh, to detail. That's for sure. Yeah, well, I, you know, I I I try. I mean, you know, I do a lot of reels, and this year here in particular, I have I have reels coming from all over the country, Washington State. Um, I do uh, Island the Fly Reels. They're based in British Columbia, Canada. They build the fly reels up there. Um, during this whole COVID thing, they they shut down their factory completely. They're not even open. Um, to this day, they're still not open. Um, and guys send their fly reels. I mean, some of them, some of those fly reels are pretty expensive, you know, and they, they, you know, it's no different than any other fisherman. You want to make sure your stuff is running at, at top notch. There's no doubt about it. Um, so those fly reels, when I get them, I mean, I make sure that those things are running like, like tops. I mean, they have to, they want to spin more than five minutes on a, a steel head of spool. So we put the high end barons in it to get it to spin. Um, if I get the four, four minutes and it's like, okay, take the barons out, they're out of alignment, realign them, put them back in, try to get that five minutes that they want. So, um, and I've had pretty good luck with that. Um, I just did, I sent two reels to Oregon last week and one to Washington state. Um, you know, so by guys doing that and sending stuff here, um, I've got a lot of other work other than fly reels because of that. Because I I, I want to believe it's the attention to detail um, that that really keeps them coming back. And that's you know as long as I stick to that philosophy, I'm fine. You know, and uh, I appreciate you guys you know giving me a shot because you know you, you guys didn't know me from a hole in the wall. You know, and it's like you know for you guys to send you know give me all these reels. You know, it's basically your your, your business right there. In a box, you know, in two boxes. I mean, you know, that that speaks louder than words, and you know, I I, I really appreciate it. I mean, it's it's um, you know, and then you guys go out and you know stick your neck out. And, oh, Dave will take care of them, and you know, I get more guys, especially this year. It's just incredible. So it's good. Uh, it's awesome. Can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, glad yeah. it's a mutual relationship. Absolutely, so great to hear. Yeah, um, yeah. Now we just got to get you out of there so you can come fish. Yeah, right? we got to we got to get know, you a, right? yeah. a big tuna fish. <laughs> yeah. I got to make a trip, get up there and get going, you know? Exactly. But, uh, but, uh, um, so one question for you. you it's yeah. going to be a tough one to answer, I think. Okay. Oh, if boy. you had to pick one offshore real brand to put your faith and money into, who would you pick? Mm-hmm. We got to be careful what we say here. <laughs> hey, you know, you right, see well, them all. The good thing is, <laughs> no, I'm, no, not a, be honest. I'm, not a, I'm not affiliated with any of them. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my first choice, I get asked this a lot. My first choice would be um, would would be uh, would be pen. Okay, I like the pens. Yeah. Um, there is some issues as Brian and I discussed the last time we uh, we met at his dad's house or your dad's house. Um, 
you know, those those issues there, I, I, I don't I don't understand why they made the change they did like that, but they did. Yeah. Um, but you know, looking beyond that, um, you know, I would have to say Alley Technus is yeah. um one of the top one of the top ones and it may be even close to the first one. Um they're they're really good reels. Uh they hold up really well. Um and then, then you can do the Shimano Trinidads and uh, uh Tiagras in there and stuff. Yeah. Um one thing about the Shimanos, I don't know, it, it could just be me. I mean, you guys fish them more. You guys fish them, I just service them. But they seem a little seem to be a little more light duty than the Pent and the Alley Technus. I don't know. It's just maybe it's just me. But I'm looking at parts in them, and it's like oh, it's kind of kind of small. That gear is kind of small compared to the other ones, you know. Interesting. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but everybody has their personal preference. I mean, that's just my thought. Um, I know a lot of guys tend to sway away from the alley, alley tactics because of the issues with you know potential issue with pots and stuff yeah but i've never had that problem so um you know guys still fish them so yeah do you see uh each brand having their little niche as far as like size reels you know for instance uh is is pen better in a certain size class reel range and and shimano better in a certain size like just sticking the standard uh, I guess offshore reels for now. Yeah. So I mean, um, and obviously you know, there's a million models too. So yeah, it's okay. yeah, yeah. So let's if we just look at the 130, um, 130 class reels, okay? Um, because of the problems that we saw uh, that Brian and I saw with that gear, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say stay away from them, but I'd I'd, I'd say be more aware of them. Yeah. Um, of uh, you know potential issues with them. Um, I think in the 130 class, I think I think Shimano's got it got it pretty good. Um, they're all right, um, you know. And again, the Alley Technus, I think they they make a 130, I believe. I, yeah. I think I've seen a couple of them. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, those two there. It seems to me that all all uh, real selections come down to the person that's using it, you know, and what yeah. they used to and what yeah. they like, you know, and how well they're um, taking care of it throughout the season. Well, that's the thing, the 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 the, the maintenance on it, and you know. Just keeping up with it—that's that's a huge part of it. The whole program. Yeah. What are your thoughts on a vet? Uh I got a couple avits right now. I mean, they're built pretty well. Um, I have seen some issues with them that you wouldn't think you would see from them, but um, it's it's you know, I think they're just—I don't know if that it's not like they're new to it, but I think they're just trying to feel out the market of it and. Uh, you know, um, we've seen a lot of clickers blow up. I got two right now, uh, 50 wide, where the clickers just blew right out of them. It's just one season. It's like, how the hell does that happen, you know? Yeah. So um, I've had correspondence back and forth with Avid, and uh, they're send, actually sending me all new clickers and stuff for free. But um, that shouldn't happen. I mean, it's, you yeah. spend enough money on these reels. They should they should last a while. Uh, one thing I will say, the Avids, they're not, they, there is not one bit of grease in those reels when they come in. These two reels are pretty much brand new, and there's nothing in them. They're bone dry. Wow. Um, Shimano, Shimano's, they're a little bit better. They got some grease. Pen, they usually load them up with the blue grease. Uh, I think they load them up with the blue grease because it turns the oil quick, and uh, that takes care of that. You know, it ends up being oil dripping out of it. So yeah, but um, we've know. had we've had good luck and bad luck with all of the above. Every reel we've broken. You know, obviously we're fishing. Yeah. We're fishing, you know, with pens right. now and have a partnership with them and they've been great to us. But you know, right. Right. An eight hundred pound animal will wreak havoc on any brand. You know what it is too? Yeah. Is we have so many clients that have no experience. They don't understand right. when to reel, when not to reel. So no matter what we're using, they figure mm -hmm. out how to break it. You know, they're right. reeling against the pressure and they're they're putting right. all their weight down on the handle instead of trying to rotate the handle. Mm -hmm. um they don't understand rod action so they think it's just you know as simple as you know winching on the reel yeah, they're not, yeah right, you know, right they're not yeah. watching the rod action like we're used to watching right right um, but um right. i mean there's some uh, we have some videos that we really can't show of you know 250 to 350 pound guys put, like leaning back with almost two hands on the handle yeah. like it's already and it's already rotated back to hit their position <laughs> right yeah, you know and, and they're else. holding <laughs> they're they're you know they got their whole body weight into it it's like mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Literally everything's gonna break. We we've, we've broken Allotechnos and pens equally as much. We had, we I yeah. don't know how many Allotechnos handles just spun right off in the middle of fights, and I don't know how many pen handles we've basically broken right off fighting fish. Yeah, just you know? the way it goes. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, it's part of the, it's part of a business. You know, I get I got a lot of local guys here that you know they they switched over to the uh, uh, inshore stuff. You know, the bottom fishing, even wire line stuff, uh, the Shimano Toriums. Uh, the 800 series, 700 series, and uh, it's amazing. I mean, last summer, I, I think I saw probably about 30 of those reels with a post for the uh, the free spool, the bridge plate that holds the, the uh, pinion gear on. The post snapped right off the frame because people just, you know, the fish runs and they, they slam the thing into gear or whatever they're doing to these reels. I mean, they just, they're just crucifying these reels. I mean, I've I've probably got five of them in my pots drawn now because they don't want to fix them because they don't hold up. You know, wow. um, they they went back to the old one thirteens, the pens with you know you, you just you know can beat them up and still fish them. I mean, it's not the most elegant way of fishing, but right, it works. <laughs> yeah, it's like drinking with you a know? cinder block in your hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Those yep. Uh, yep. the heavy lead ground fish days wreak havoc on those oh, god yeah you know 15 to 20 size conventional reels Every just reel. like mm-hmm. people drop uh, flipping them back into gear with 20 ounces of lead screaming to the bottom yep. it, it's yep. just i don't yep. care what reel it is it's eventually going to have that issue yeah, yeah it's going to blow up i mean it's just there's no way around it you know yeah it just happens you know and then you get again the inexperienced people on the on the boat and they just they just want to see the fish that's all they want to see you know and However, that gets up. It's like you know, and you guys must go crazy. I can imagine because, yeah, you, know, you know, you know how your gear is, and I, I see how your gear is. It's always in good shape, and you know, and the last thing you want to see is some like three hundred foot, uh, three hundred pound guy ripping the handle off a reel. It's like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's the it's the big giant, you know, strong guys that just think they right. can overpower a fish. When yeah, in reality, right. you yeah. you want the dainty guy that's just gonna wait. Yeah. You yeah. Know? No. Exactly. Yeah. It's and a waiting game. You, you know? use but, the gear how it's supposed to be used. The lady angler usually right. does it the best. Hundred percent. Girls fight yeah, fish I'm, better than everybody else. Yeah. yeah. I have. It's funny. I've always said I can tell. I can tell how people fish by the the look of the drag on their reel. You know, I can take a pot of reel that you know some brute of a guy five hundred pounds has been fishing with the drags all all toasted out of it and just yeah. dust. And his wife brings he brings his wife's reel and it's like she catches the same fish if more. And the drag is perfect. It's yeah. like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's what do you patience think this thing is about? what it is. Uh. It's patience. That's what it is. My <laughs> wife's the same way. That's why I don't take her fishing anymore. So, <laughs> Have you opened any of our 130s yet? Did you say you did? You might have already said that. Yeah, I got one right here yeah. in front of me. How? Uh, how um, so year after year opening our, our 130s, what do the drag plates look like? Are they in good shape? Are they in bad shape? Is it different every time? It's different every time. Yeah. Um, I will say that you you guys are the guys that know how to set your drags and stuff because you know i have to say 90 percent of the time there's no problems with the drags um yeah they they have dust on them and stuff like that which they're gonna have i mean yeah. that's all there is to it but not to the point where the the drag uh the drag material is delaminating from the backing plate which i see a lot um which tells you that they're just toasting the drags right off the reels you know like too um, heavy a drag too heavy of a drag, yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of guys will just, you know, a lot of guys see the full on the cover and they just go full, right, right to full, and that's it. And you know, the fish send is it. Pull, <laughs> just, send just, it. Just, <laughs> just, just pulling. It's like, dude, it's like you're ripping everything apart. Yeah. You know, the rods are all falling apart and everything. I mean, it's just a mess, you know. Hmm. But you know, yeah, I mean, your your reels are, are usually in decent shape. I mean, they're just just in good shape. But you keep them up every year. You know, we, we're into them and do what we got to do and tweak them, whatever yeah. we have to do. And you know, I mean. For for guys that fish as much as you, I mean, you know, the reels are really in good shape. So yeah, I know we had that one that the handle was basically seized by the end of the year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you looked at that one. I'm interested to see how damaged that yeah, one was. That one out. We, we yeah, I haven't looked at this one, one here. This one, the reel I have a pot, or almost a pot. It says clicker on the side, and I can see what's yep. going on with that. So that might be that reel that you know the a few times we got some bites had trouble hearing the bite. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we had, I believe it was the middle floater, got a ton of action last year. And uh, yeah, the, the, the click is not even working on this one. Yeah, I'm spinning it now. So. <laughs> when we, uh, so when we steam out every morning, we have the rods arranged the same way on the back okay. of the boat when we stretch our leaders. So our far floater 
typically goes in the starboard far corner and then gotcha. our middle floaters are port uh in our port corner when we stretch them so um i believe let me think here the live well is on that side so there's like a spray we have a spray pretty much every single morning on the way that okay. definitely gets on i believe it's the middle floater could be the far floater oh, I can't it's remember. Port side, okay. right? yeah yeah it gets right i mean it pinpoint perfectly right into the handle of that reel oh, and that's the reel that is the the worst so which yeah. is interesting yeah. to see yeah and it's gonna happen you know it's yeah. just the way it is i mean it's it's you know the salt's gonna get in there and it's just gonna do its thing you know and, and that's that's all it's gonna do you know yeah so yeah well dave but, um, this has been awesome we've uh been tear- no, we've I, been tearing it up for about an hour and this has been some yeah, really no, really good information it, yeah. yeah no i appreciate you guys uh you know taking the opportunity and uh, let me uh spiel for an hour and uh you know whatever we can do to help out in the future be more than happy to so how do um how do people find you they want to give you a batch of reels um obviously they can look at the podcast description it'll all be on there but um website social media all that sort of thing yeah so basically i have a facebook page uh just beaver tail rod and reel dot com uh beaver tail rod and reel uh, on facebook um, I had an Instagram account. I'm trying to recover that. I don't know what the hell happened to it. Something got hacked somehow, and it's just been a mess. So um, I haven't done a lot with the social media this year or so far because I've just been so busy. Um, but uh, I got a website also, beavertailrodandreel.com. Uh, go on there. Um, people can email me. They can text me. My number is 401-215-5062. Um, if you text me, just leave your name so I know who I'm talking to. Um you know, and, and, and don't hesitate to give me a call. I'm, I'm usually, I'm usually pretty, pretty available to take phone calls. So yeah, it's never really a problem. I, so. every single time I've texted you, I've got a response within 24 yeah. hours. So you're, it is yeah, nice. no, communications I, key. Yeah, no, and that's the key. I mean, you, ha- you have to be on top of these things. I know, I know a lot of guys that I've, uh, uh, done work with in the past. I mean, you know, two days, three days later, I, I understand thing ha- things happen, but I try to get right on it and just, just do what we got to do. You know, we appreciate um, it. It just you know, there's no need stacking stacking messages up, and you know, then people get ticked off, and you know, it's just you're just gonna be upfront with people and just you know, answer the questions and do what you say you're gonna do. So. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, sir. We appreciate right. it. We, we'll thank see you. you uh, we'll see you in the next yeah, few I'll, weeks uh, to grab reels and. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get them all all done together so we can just make one trip and you guys will be ready to go. Nice. Cool. So awesome. Well, before we go, all we're right. gonna end this on OG's three words of fishing wisdom. Remember, you can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. Always trust your instincts. And the last one, you'll just have to keep listening. Stay tight. There everybody. you go. Thanks, Dave. We'll talk to all you right, later, guys. guys. Thank Take you. Take care. Nice seeing you. You sure. too. Bye. Thank you very much for tuning into the Sea Rose Fishing Podcast. If you would like more information about today's guest, our episode, and show sponsors, or if you want to order hats and apparel, please visit our website at seabrosfishing.com. You can also stay up to date in all the latest Seabros Fishing content and podcast episodes by following us on Instagram at Seabros Fishing. Finally, to book a trip with us through our family-run charter fishing company, please visit massbayguides.com or see our latest updates and fishing reports by following Mass Bay Guides on Instagram and Facebook.